Good morning, everybody. Uh, for those who doesn't follow Linux RDMA list, I'm kernel developer, which is primarily focused on uh, InfiniBand stack. And uh, this is my presentation about uh, kernel web say, API changes, which we and all internal and external developers did in core uh, InfiniBand core layer. We will talk about four different API changes which were introduced last uh, in last year. We will talk about memory registration API. We will talk about uh, CQ polling API, and we will talk about uh, draining QP. I will touch a little bit uh, a new API which was not which was submitted but not accepted yet. It's a general RDMA write read. Uh, the whole this uh, all, almost all. Uh, all these APIs were presented in uh, different of uh, groups. Uh, so first of all, we are presented as a concept and after that, uh, external and internal developers uh, wrote uh, the code itself. So let's start from memory registration API. We already have four different memory registration API in kernel. Uh, we have physical memory region, which is totally synchronous uh, registration uh, API uh, with major drawback, but it requires uh, a for every registration, for every request uh, to, uh, to create new memory region. Additionally, we have fast memory registration API, which is not widely adopted, uh, but it's uh, asynchronically interface, uh, which is work with uh, work, uh, work requests. A, we have memory windows registration. It also a synchronic interface. It was totally unadopted. So it was uh, removed from the kernel uh, in the uh, last, uh, last uh, release cycle, I think, I think so. And uh, also we have fast memory registration uh, mode, which is uh, asynchronic, very fast, uh, in use by all ULP, ULP uh, providers like ISERP, uh, ISERP. Uh, so our decision was not to invent new wheel, not to invent new multi no new registration interface, just to extend the existing one. So when uh, you're thinking about which one is going to be extended, you see only one solution. It will be well, last because it's accepted, fast, and uh, very efficient. Uh, Original uh, uh, fast fast registration interface uh, has uh, a, a couple requirements. What all blocks must be page aligned. It must uh, be come together. Only last and, and uh, first uh, block uh, can uh, can be less than uh, than page size. Uh, it was complicated for, for all ULPs uh, to work with this interface because all layers above uh, above uh, ULP are working with scatter gather list, uh, which can be generic, which can be arbitrary. So what arbitrary is uh, different sizes uh, for every scatter gather entry. Uh, and all layers below ULP are working with page vectors. So all ULP is needed to implement his own transition between a scatter gather to ULP. Uh, this is our drawbacks, as I explained. Uh, because every uh, every registration required a transition from memory region to page vector, so every ULP was required to register two things together. So two calls instead of one call. And uh, implement by, its, by, by itself. Uh, and by design, this uh, interface didn't support uh, arbitrary scatter gather list. As I said, arbit arbitrary scatter gather list, it's every entry has different uh, size of, uh, of uh, can, be diff it can be in different sides. So if we just look on, on the API itself, you will see complexity. We have uh, allocate two calls. We have three to three two calls. We have a very complex uh, structure to to register interface, it's, uh, to register memory itself. Because it's asynchronous, you need to, to post a work request and vice versa and fill a lot of things. <coughs> the suggestion was let's unify. Let's use one, uh, one API call. 
let's use one call for free. Let's simplify. Uh, let's simplify work request and uh, also let's provide the general gen generic function which will translate from uh, scatter cover to to page vectors uh, uh, for every ULP in the same manner. Additionally, if device below ULP support arbitrary scatter cover list, uh, all uh, what is expected from these devices to export this device his device capability to upper level level and uh, IB Core will be able to to provide uh, a relevant scatter cover list, which can be in different size. So, from ULP and from programmers' uh, point of view, right now we don't need to bother at all uh, how to how to register a scatter cover, how to work with scatter cover, just supply scatter cover from block layer interface uh, without any conversion. It will work uh, flawlessly. And this is a, regist uh, a registration flow. Allocate post uh, work request and post request uh, with uh, transfer key. Very simple. Uh, new in, new additional new API, it's a CQ polling. Despite the fact that this, uh, uh, this is very common uh, or common operation in, uh, uh, in, uh, in IB, IB stack, uh, uh, it is all, it's, it's a very complex operation. Uh, you, we have a lot of uh, consideration to take into account how to you supposed to work with, uh, how to you supposed to implement this polling interface. For example, uh, do we want uh, to poll it uh, in kernel threads, in work queue, in, arc, uh, in the hard arc queue, soft arc queue? Every 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 option has a uh, drawbacks uh, and uh, can be chosen differently for different uh, solutions. We have also uh, need to understand how we need to decide between uh, multiple CQ, like scheduler between CQs. Uh, what is the arm, what is the arm policy? How do we arm? We always have missed events. Uh, it is uh, almost uh, uh, unavoidable, unavoidable. And it's not, it's not the end. We have additional things that we need to think about it. Because it's asynchronic, you need to think about how are you going uh, to receive your work request back. Uh, sometimes uh, work uh, request ID is not uh, is not reliable. It can be reliable, can be unreliable. Uh, everything can be changed. Multiple sources of post uh, post send. Uh, how do you support? How do you going? How are you going to po to pull it uh, in batches one by one? Because, uh, uh, multiple CPUs and affinity and locality as well. Uh, every ULP implemented it differently. So we wanted to try to 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 push it into and place it into one place, uh, one place uh, which is acceptable for, for everyone, which is uh, uh, will remove randomness between uh, different uh, different solution. Uh, so the proposed API was very simple as well. All what we need is to decide on which which context we do we want. Do we want to pull it uh, in uh, the same color context? Do we want it to pull it soft RQ or work queue? Uh, properly allocate this CQ and uh, fill a completion uh, handler. So in case uh, this completion will be pulled, it will be called to this completion. And uh, almost uh, the same. Uh, almost uh, uh, that's all from the, from the developer point of view. So it helps us to unify logic of uh, of uh, ULP. Right now, no ULP is needed to think about how how is going to pull, how to handle events, and how to maintain logic. Uh, uh, all. Uh, all all, all errors can be handled uh, together in one place. Uh, uh, by default, we are supporting a different polling scheme. We try to optimize it for performance for all uh, all different ULPs. Draining QP. Despite the fact that draining QP is very simple operation, all what you need is uh, move from a uh, uh, QP to error state and uh, to remove all work requests from it. Uh, it has a complexity in it. Uh, complexity, what Sometimes 
CQ can be connected to different QPs, and you don't know you don't well, you don't know when this QP is uh, empty. Uh, we have a common. We have a different uh, solution for it. We, when I'm saying we, I'm saying it's the developers. Uh, uh, we can just wait for this uh, for all uh, work requests to come uh, to, to be complete and only after it destroy it. Uh, it can be indefinite because uh, you're just waiting. You, you, ne you never uh, you never set to over party what you don't want to accept. It really can be different. Additionally, we have uh, we, we we can just destroy QP. It will lead us to memory leaks, uh, or otherwise we need to, to handle a, a shadow copy of every work request and uh, to update it every time. It's too complicated. It's possible, but too complicated. Uh, additionally, we have another solution. We can uh, just uh, modify QP to be error uh, and uh, try to pull CQ till, till it's empty. As I pre as I mentioned before, in case of uh, multiple QPs connected to one CQ, it will not work. So there is fourth solution. All what we need is uh, to change QP to be in error state. We need to post marker, which does nothing at, uh, onto this uh, specific draining, uh, so drained QP. And uh, let's move and wait till uh, this marker will be, accept will, be, will be received from Paul CQ. This will help us uh, to identify that this QP was empty, totally empty, uh, without any relation to the different uh, QPs uh, available. Uh, also, we simplified a lot of interface. So right now, it's only it uh, three three functions. Uh, you can SQ, you can drain SQ, drain RQ, and drain QP, which calls uh, to drain SQ and drain, drain RQ uh, one after another. Uh, additional additional change which, which was proposed, I wrote it's work in progress, so I just, I'm going to state only the problem. I'm not going to give a, a final API because it's not finalized and not accepted. Uh, generic RDMA read write. In storage world, at the end you're doing only two things, read, write, read, write. So there is no need to, to implement in ULP uh, for every ULP this uh, semantics and uh, uh, and ask from from the upper layer to to know how to fill your work request, how to work with RDMA. So the proposed solution, uh, it's not a real solution, but it's a motivation, was to to use uh, one simple API a API for this uh, read and write. Uh, by default, it didn't support. Uh, it didn't support scatter gather list, uh, and uh, because we added uh, support of scatter gather list and registration, it was pretty native uh, to add the uh, scatter gather list to to this uh, read write generic scatter gather list. Uh, we also added uh, ability to use a memory pool, so it was performance optimized, and right now uh, read and write requests are not uh, needed to uh, to register it again. Uh, right now it's efficient. Uh, I want to give a credit to to the people who sent patches and who implemented it. It's, uh, it's Steve Weiss, it's Christoph Helwig, uh, it's Christoph Helwig together with Sagi and Sagi Greenberg uh, uh, alone. But it's not uh, only them, they just sent patches. But uh, a lot of people contributed on Linux RDMA by their comments and uh, sending their reviewers, testing. Uh, uh, and I all want uh, to thank you for everybody who contributed to this effort. Thank you. You mentioned the drain API and you described a no-op work request. What work request would that be? Uh, this work request is total empty work request with uh, a pointer to callback uh, what to do in case uh, you... So have that's a new work request. What do you do with a legacy device? 
a no it's not new request you're not uh, posting new opcode you are posting a, a s with special wor work id okay but the work id is the context cookie for some work request okay work requests do things they send messages they register memory they they do things what operation is a no op Yeah, the actual work is there, uh, is irrelevant because once the compare is in the error state, ah. it's just going to come back with a flush error okay. anyway. So they so, put a cookie in it so they know when the specific error or the specific work request that they're sending has been sent and returned. All right. And then the one thing I get that, I get that although iWarp has slightly different behavior in the errors. They have special case code for iWarp in here. Special yeah, case for iWarp. Code. This is why yeah. I always constantly ask about uh, right. why this, we this need is the, so we can take okay. all the special case code. I'm sure I'm code. sure this has been well discussed on the mailing list. Yeah, right? and uh, iWarp right. have a different How are you, behavior I, can because you it's, maybe uh, just you cannot uh, you cannot put a uh, cup in uh, error state for iWarp uh, so Yeah, all right. Can you humor me for one more thing? How do you know that you can post anything, that the QP is not full and the CQ has room? I mean, you can only post if there's room on the QP and the CQ, right? E well, it, you know, I'm sure you've discussed this on the mailing list. Yeah, I don't okay. have the It's a bit of a surprise to me that, that you can just wave your hands and say, I can flush it by waiting for this marker to appear. That's a very subtle behavior. Uh, yeah, I can imagine. I've had quite a bit of experience with it on Windows. Tom, are, right. you, are you asking how do you guarantee that there's room for that extra work request? Because it's the consumers who are responsible for adding one to the size of their sent Yeah, I know. So when, uh, all right, let me just give you a little bit of practical experience. A lot of CQs and, and RQs have this power of two behavior. You know, you say, I want 512, they give you 512. You say, I want 513, they give you 1024. And so you add one here, you add one there, you add one for, for safety. and You end up with much larger objects than you expected. Weird things happen to your scalability. We've had real bad experience with that. Anyway. Okay. We will fix it in case we will find it. So it's not a deal. No, it's done deal, but we always can uh, change it uh, internally to fix it uh, if, in case there's uh, someone bug fix. Well, no, all right, that kind of shocks so me. <laughs> I mean, you're going to ship this code without fully testing it? <laughs> First is that of what all, you just said? Uh, everybody who is submitting uh, his code is expected to test his code. So, okay. uh, and yes, and yes, we tested. Uh, we just uh, didn't uh, find uh, this uh, issue as you okay. is describing. That's all. Okay. <laughs> Concerns me. All right. Thank you.